Hello there and welcome to another Bow Beats video. Today we've got a sampler comparison. So we're going to compare the Digitact, the Circuit Rhythm and the new SP404 Mark II. So we're going to take a look at the specs of each device and compare it. We're also going to take a look at the workflow and how these three samplers stack up against each other and which one is right for you. Today's massive sampler comparison is sponsored by DistroKid, so if you happen to make some music and want to upload it, use DistroKid and my link in the description. That's a good way to support the channel, and it only costs $20 a year, and you can upload unlimited amounts of music. So why did I pick these three samplers specifically? Well, it's because all of them are quite limited in certain ways, but they're loved not in spite of their limitations, but because of them. You see, the limitations themselves is what makes you create something different with these devices. You have to find interesting workarounds to do certain things. Sometimes frustrating, yes, but often it takes you places that you wouldn't normally go with more limitless sampler workstations. And if you walk away from this video feeling like these limitations aren't necessarily that fun for you, then something like the Machina Plus, the MPC-1 or the Synthstrom Deluge could be a better option. So first up, let's talk about raw sampling specifications. So here I've ranked the devices in the following way. Number one, the, the first place is for the SP404 Mark II, second place Digitact and third place Circuit Rhythm. And here is my reasoning. The Digitact and Circuit Rhythm samples mono only, and the SP404 Mark II samples both stereo, mono and has several input effects that you can apply directly to the input when recording. The SP has 16 gigs of internal memory and one sample can be 16 minutes long. The Circuit Rhythm instead has a max sample length of 220 seconds per pack, not per sample, or 3.6 minutes in total per pack. That's what you can load into the working memory at one point. And the Digitact instead has 64 megabytes of RAM per project or 14.33 minutes of total sample time per project. Now in terms of total storage, the Digitact has 1 gig of internal storage, not to be confused with the working memory of 64 megabytes. And on the SP you can have a 32 gig memory card filled out with samples and then load it into the 16 gigs working memory. On the Rhythm instead you have packs that are installed on the SD card via the components software and they can be loaded into the working memory from the device. None of these devices offer polyphonic playback of a single sample, so you can't take one sample and play that as a chord. But the SP has most polyphony in terms of playing back most samples at one time. 32 voices on the SP versus 8 voices on the Digitact and Circuit Rhythm. And when it comes to time stretching as well as BPM syncing your samples or loops, there's only one device that offers it and that's the SP404 Mark II. Now the first thing that I've tested with these three samplers is loading the same samples onto them. Basically try to recreate the same beat on each of the three devices. So let me first play you the song here on each device and then I'll walk you through the technical differences to sort of make up the difference that you're hearing.
So while we have the same samples loaded, there are some obvious differences here in sound. On the Digitech, you just have a lot more options to shape your sound. For example, you have two LFOs. So on the pad sound, we have set it to sample tuning, giving it a slight vibrato, and we have set it to filter resonance. And together with ample reverb and a delay that fits back into the reverb, we get this very spacey feeling. And on the circuit rhythm, we have a little bit less to work with, but it's more immediate. So I've recorded some parameter automations for the distortion, for example. I've also recorded some parameter automations for the delay and the reverb for this pad sound. But when we get to the SP, we have to think a little bit more. Because you can't automate parameters, you can't record parameter changes into the sequencer. So we have to decide, do we want to record this pad here into the sequencer somehow? Or do we want to resample it into a new sample? So what I did is I resampled the pads in two pitches. And then I enabled the effects and made this loop here. And then I recorded the pad loop into the sequencer and started adding drums. And now let's listen with the bass. So on the Digitact, I have the LFO set to filter resonance as well as frequency. We have some bit reduction going on, so when the filter is turning, when it's cutting off the higher frequencies, we hear less of the bit reduction. So this is just like a little interaction that can make something sound more interesting. And if we go here into the envelope here, the filter, so you can see we have some filter envelope going on, and that's something you don't have really on these devices in the same way. So let's go to the rhythm. Here I have some automations to the distortion and the filters, but you notice that there's no, for example, filter envelope, there's no LFOs here to really change up the sound a lot. Let's do the SP. You notice that the SP is pretty much the most boring of the bunch, and, and that's a, for a very simple reason. So the Digitact has the most sound shaping tools for just like changing up the sound of just one sample like this. Whereas the rhythm is like in the middle, you don't have the LFOs, but you can do a lot of parameter automations, whereas the SP doesn't have any parameter automations into the sequencer. So what you're left with is recording this here as an audio loop with the effects or tweaking it live. So in summary, when we're using the same samples here, the same one shots to build our songs, we still end up in very different places. So on the Digitact, more sound shaping possibilities, on the rhythm, it's a faster workflow. And on the Roland, because the sequencer isn't that deep and you can't record chromatically into the sequencer, something that I really want them to add, and I spoke about this in my review of the unit, because you can't record chromatically into the sequencer, you have to do some workarounds by resampling sounds at different pitches. And because of that, it's a very different type of workflow when we have these one-shot samples for building tracks. But if you, for example, want to sample a whole track or parts of a track, say from vinyl, use that to create a beat, for example, then it's a totally different workflow and much more suited for it compared to these two devices. So let's make a beat on each device just to get a feel for the workflow. So on the Digitact here, we have these buttons here corresponding to the eight tracks. They're loaded with one-shot samples. And on the circuit rhythm, we have the samples. and the eight tracks. And on the SP, we have the 16 velocity sensitive pads that you can use to trigger samples. So here we have a pad, for example, a 
bass. So let's build a quick beat here on the dig attack. Just play some trigs. We have 16 steps. We can actually increase it to 64 if we want to very quickly like this. Let's add a bass on top of this. We can do chromatic mode. Let's record a pad on top of it. Let's add some hi-hats. Now if you want to add some effects, go to the amp page, just turn up the delay and the reverb. And if we want to edit these settings, we just hit function, delay for delay settings, or reverb for reverb settings. And to create automations, we can either just go into the step sequencer, hit one of the steps, and turn a knob here, so you can see here, that we're now adding some bit reduction to the first pad. But we can also live record some changes. So let's live record some filter automation. Now on the circuit rhythm, we also have a step sequencer. You can see these blue pads here. And we can use track number one here, put down a kick. We can change the tempo. We can go into track number two, make it 32 steps. And now we can create a little bass line using multiple bass samples. And just like on the DigiTact, we can record some parameter automations, either live or per step. And just like on the DigiTact, we can play a sample chromatically. And to add some effects, hit the effects button. We have a delay and a reverb. Those are send effects, so you send using these knobs here from each of the tracks. So we choose a reverb preset here, we turn it up. Let's record some hats and you can live record it or you could just place down steps like this. The next up, let's create something similar on the SP. We go to the pattern, select. We press record, select a pad that we want to record into. So you can hear we have a metronome. So here's no step sequencer. We can set the length here to four bars, for example. Set the quantization, let's do 100%. And when we hit record here, we have a counting enabled and it will take us back to the sample select. So you see it counts in. So now we can actually rehearse and continue record.
And when we're happy, you can just press exit and we have our little pattern here. And if you wanna record on top of it, just press record here again. So we have rehearsal, we can find the hi-hats. If we want to add some effects, it's a little bit different because on these devices, as you've seen me do, we send the tracks to the effects. It's send effects. Now on SP, it's a little bit different because you basically have four like master effects, if you will. Two of them are performance oriented because you have these three controls here to control whatever effect you're turning on using these buttons here. And then you have two additional effects that are found in the menu, which are just master effects. You can't tweak them, but you can't perform using them. So either when we have our little sample here, we can use these effects here. And perform our pattern or patterns or chains of patterns. Or we could just resample this little loop here with the effects. So when you resample it, you can resample it with the effects and creating a sample that has all the effects you want. We can also set it's only the pad sound that you're hearing is sent to the effect. So we can turn on, for example, a delay here for just the pad sound. But unlike these devices, if you want to record some sort of change to the effects, some sort of parameter automation, you have to re-record things as audio. That's the workflow, because you can't record automations into the sequencer. So it's definitely a different workflow, and it's highlighted when we want to take these patterns... take the patterns and create a song because on the SP here we can go into the pattern sequencer we can just copy the pattern onto a new slot here now if we want to take this new sequence here we basically have to hit record and hit delete So now that we've deleted parts of the sequence, we can re-record and create variations, for example. Whereas on the rhythm, we can go into pattern, we can press duplicate to just duplicate, for example, the kick pattern. We can link them together. So now we can make changes to the beats. And it's a much quicker workflow than on the SP and on the Digitact. We have the patterns here. So number three is the pattern we've been working on. And you just hit pattern and copy and paste to paste a pattern. Now we could continue working, going into pad, clear. So now we could record something else. And just create variations. So it's quicker on these devices, a bit slower on this, but when we get to resampling you will also notice that there are some big advantages when it comes to resampling with this device. And before I forget, if you have been wondering about the t-shirts and, and hoodies that I've been wearing in this video here today, they are a part of a new merch collection that is available on merch.bowbeats.tv. Now before we move on, we gotta touch on resampling. So basically sampling internally, sampling what's going on on the devices internally and creating new interesting loops. And these devices can all do it. Uh, I'd say that the SP is definitely stronger, we'll touch on that later in the video, but all three can do it. And I just want to give you an example of what it sounds like when you resample the, the beat song that you just heard. So we got the Digitect. Mm -hmm. 
and the resampled version. Original beat on the circuit rhythm. And resampled version. Original on the SP. And resampled version. Now, the reason why I think that the SP is absolutely best in terms of resampling workflow is because it resamples in stereo and the other two in mono. So, if you add stereo effects and resample on the Digitact and Circuit Rhythm, it will be mono. And on the SP, you retain the stereo image. So, on the Circuit Rhythm and the Digitact, the resampling is best to free up tracks, whereas on the SP, the resampling is an integral part of the workflow because you can use it to create new song parts. check out which one is the best sampler, here's a word from today's sponsor. Here's 5 reasons to try out DistroKid. Firstly, you sign up for about $20 a year and you can upload unlimited amounts of music. Secondly, it's really quick and easy to upload, basically anyone can do it without any prior knowledge. Three, there are different tiers of subscriptions, so if you want to release your music under say different artist names or if you're starting a label, DistroKid has an option for you. Four, DistroKid lets you upload to relevant stores and streaming services, such as Spotify and iTunes, and it doesn't take long for the music to be available in the stores. Five, there's also the hyperfollow feature, which automatically creates a custom page where people can find out where to buy or listen to your music. And I personally really like this feature. So go and check out DistroKid using my link in the description. You get a little discount and you support the channel. Next up, let's talk sampling. And the way I rank these devices is simply the SP is the best to sample with. It's just the best. Circuit Rhythm is number two, and Digitect is actually number three in terms of just sampling into it, and I'll explain why. So on the SP, if we want to sample a one-shot, we can just hit Rec, hit the pad, press Rec, and there we have it. Now we can play it chromatically. Now on the Circuit Rhythm, we just go to Sample Rec, we hit one of these red squares, because that indicates that it's empty, and we can just hit record, and now it's saved, and we can go to a track, and find it there, and we can play it. Notice, however, that it's sampled in mono, so while it's a stereo input, it takes the stereo signal and turns it into a mono sample. And on the Digitact, you hit the sampling button here, use this knob here to select the input. So we'll do left and right. So we enable monitoring, let's set the threshold, press yes. And yes again. So now we have it here. So now we can save it, we can give it a name, saving it, and we can also assign it to a pad. Done. So now let's go out. And it's still here in the memory until we discard it. So now we have it here, and we can play it. But just like on the circuit rhythm, it's mono, so it's a bit of a limitation. And one thing to keep in mind here with the SP is that we also have input effects. So we can go to the input settings, hit input effects, and here we can select different input effects that apply to the incoming audio. So a bit of chorus, for example. Or a bit of cassette simulator. Now recording one-shot samples is all well and good, but it's also very interesting to see how they compare in terms of recording longer samples. So let's play a little pad sequence over this beat here and try and record it. 
So we have the beat here on the Digitech. We can go into the record menu. And if we just trigger it like this, it's armed. And now we can start recording whenever we want. So let's do record on the beat. Something like that. So now we have our little loop here. We can save it, assign it to a pad, go into the sequencer, here we have the pad, put down a step on the first trigger here, and we can make sure that the amp envelope here is infinite. And now with some envelope to filter, some bit reduction, some distortion, and also some delay and reverb. Now if we want to edit the sample, we can just press source here. And we can see that we can set the start and end the point of the sample as well as loop, level, bit reduction, play it forwards and backwards, and we can tune it as well. Now on the circuit with them, we have a little beat here, and we wanna sample into it. So to record, go to sample rec, press an empty slot here, hit record, let's start playing the beat, and we can just wait until it loops, just like on the Digitact. By pressing record again, we're now saving the sample. You can see it's blinking, so it's saving. And here we have it. And you can, of course, go into sample rack here, press the sample, change the start and end the points, for example. And if we hit save, it will save with those new settings. But let's not, because it sounds pretty okay. Now on the SP, in order to take this bass sound and play it chromatically into the sequencer, I basically created different samples in different pitches. So I could record it into the sequencer. And now to record a sample over this beat, I go to external input here, the menu, I set the routing here to external input, that way, I can go out, I can start my little beat here, and I can record over it. So we hit resample, we select a pad for resampling, we start our little beat here, and when we're ready, we just start recording the pad. Now is a good time to touch on sample editing functionality. On this device, as you've seen me, you can change the start and end point, you can loop a sample, for example, you can have it play forward and backwards. All of that is also available here on the SP. However, you also have a much more graphical representation of your sample. So we can zoom into the waveform and see what's actually going on. And now to record it into the sequencer, we just press record, record the sample just like we would any other sampling into the sequencer, and... Next up, let's talk about creating synth sounds out of a sample, so using a sample as an oscillator. And in my experience and testing, 
it's basically just the DigiTact that can do it reliably. It's the device where it really sounds good, creating a synth sound out of a small sample and playing it. So I'm not talking about like sampling an actual synth sound and playing it, that sounds okay on all devices. I'm talking about creating new sounds using a sample as an oscillator. And just to give you a few examples of what it can sound like on the DigiTact, here are some examples from a previous video of mine. So you can do it on the Rhythm and you can do it on the SP, but honestly it just doesn't sound that convincing to me and I think the DigiTact is just the device to go for if you want to take single cycle waveforms or very short waveforms and, and create synth sounds out of that. So I just wanted to kind of get that across. Next up, let's rank these devices in terms of chopping up samples. And my personal ranking is the SP is by far the best, then the Rhythm, and lastly the DigiTact because it can't really do any sort of chopping of samples. So on the SP if we have a loop like this. And let's say for whatever reason we want to chop it up, we can just hit shift and chop. Now we're in chop mode and if I hit sample, I've now manually created four slices. And I can go in and change the start and end point of a slice. And then you just assign these slices to the pads. Super simple. You can also, if we go out, hit shop here and do auto mark. So we could use, for example, time division, the level or transients to detect where to put a mark and then shop accordingly. So we could do, for example, time division, eight, now we have eight slices. And then you can simply assign them to a pad and that's how simple it is. So on the circuit rhythm we can chop samples but it's not as advanced as on the SP. So we can select a sample, this loop here, and we can hit sample, go from keyboard mode to slice mode. And now we can set to four slices, we can set it to eight slices or 16 slices. So we could do four slices and we can go back here and now we have four slices. And we can change the start and end point of each of the slices and then use them here in the sequencer. And on the DigiTech there's not really a chopping feature. Sure, you can take a loop and then locking the start and end point of that loop differently per step to chain different portions of that loop together. It's not an auto chopping feature, you can't really play the chops, so yeah, it is what it is. In terms of connectivity, both these devices as full-sized MIDI and the SP uses uh, these smaller MIDI ports, so you need a dongle for the MIDI in and out. And the SP isn't really great when it comes to MIDI connectivity, you basically just use it to sync stuff. It's not really a good sequencer to sequence external gear, and it's a little cumbersome to sequence using an external unit. I've tried sequencing the SP from the DigiTact and from the Rhythm, I wouldn't recommend it. it it's, yeah, you, you might find a good solution for this, you might find a, a workflow that suits you, but to me it, it just doesn't feel natural. It feels like its own thing. Uh, it doesn't feel like it connects very well to other pieces of equipment. Whereas the DigiTact has eight MIDI tracks that you can use to sequence external gear, so it's really nice, it has really nice MIDI implementation, you can use it to send CC, you can do a ton of things to control external gear.
also really nice to control the Digitec using an external controller. So that's something which I really like a lot because there's a lot of parameters that you can access using an external controller. So connectivity wise, the Digitec is absolutely by far the best. And then it's the circuit rhythm. It's not really meant for sequencing external gear, but you can of course send MIDI out using the tracks here to sequence something else. So that's totally possible, but it doesn't have dedicated MIDI tracks like on the circuit tracks. Sure, you could connect a controller, control stuff on the circuit rhythm with an external controller as well. Makes less sense than on the Digitact because it has fewer functions that you can access using an external controller. So to me, it's Digitact is absolutely the best in terms of connectivity. The Rhythm is number two and the SP404 comes last. It feels very much like a device I'll use on its own or as a master effect, performance effect for a rig or something together with other units. So using the onboard effect to process uh, audio from other devices. And what about portability? Well, I think the Circuit Rhythm is by far the most portable. It has a built-in battery. It's a really nice like couch sketch pad. You can just sit and have fun with it very easily. It's very immediate. It's very fast. You turn it on, you can immediately get going. Second place is the SP. It doesn't have a built-in battery, which is a little bit of a shame, but it is what it is. But you can use six AA batteries to power it. You can also use a USB power bank. Like it's not as immediate as the Circuit Rhythm, but it's a really great portable sampler. And lastly is the Digitact, which doesn't have any built-in battery whatsoever. I know there's some hacks that you can do and you can also use some MyVolts. However, um, it's just not portable out of the box. So keep that in mind if you want something on the bus, for example. We also have to talk about price. The Circuit Rhythm is the cheapest, around $399. Then it's the SP, around $499. And the Digitact is by far the most expensive at around $800 or even more. I've seen it for $850. There's definitely different values here for your money. Now I think the SP is very much the, like the sweet spot in terms of the cost and you get a ton of sampling performance out of, of that money. The Rhythm is maybe the better entry level device. It's easier to get going with, it's faster. And the Digitact is by comparison the most expensive, but it also offers the most sound shaping tools and the deepest sequencer. So take that into account. Next up, let's talk about performance effects. And here I've ranked them the following way. The best one is the SP. It definitely has the strongest performance effects, followed by the Circuit Rhythm, which is close behind. It has some really interesting performance effects. And lastly is the Digitact, which doesn't really offer performance effects. Sure, you can take incoming audio and process it through the delay and reverb, but that's about it. It's, it's very lackluster as a kind of effects unit, if you will. Whereas the Rhythm and the SP, you could actually buy them just to use them as effects unit, like. Sure, you wouldn't be taking advantage of all the features, but you could actually use them just as effects units. On the SP, we have these three knobs here that we can use to control these six effects. You can also select whatever effect you want on these buttons here from the menu. And you also have two buses. So we have six effects on two buses. So we can actually very quickly switch between 12 effects and control them using these three knobs. And if we shift here, effect settings, we can set up two additional master effects. They aren't controllable using these knobs here, but they're there so we can use them. So to clarify, you have four effects buses, meaning you can have four effects active at one time, plus the one input effect that we talked about earlier. The way it works is this. Whereas on the circuit rhythm we have grid effects, so you just press the mixer, press it again, 
And here we have 16 slots for grid effects. These are customizable, so you can go in and change them using the component software, and there's multiple different types. You can also trigger effects together, for example, this phaser and this beat repeat. And this processing also works on incoming audio, so it's the same for both devices, that you can process external audio using the performance effects, which is really interesting and makes them work really well as effects units. So now that we've compared these devices, let me know in the comment section which one is right for you and why. And here I'm going to give you my perspective on it. The Digitact has the best sequencer and most sound shaping possibilities of all these devices. I think it's the one that's easiest to take just one shot samples or even create your own synth sounds using it, create something that sounds original and interesting. The Rhythm is the most portable, it's also the most easy to use, it has a really fast workflow, it's also the fastest for sampling one shots. So if you want to sample say a drum machine into it, it's really good, really fast. But it's not good with longer samples, just like the Digitact, it, it has this limitation. Longer samples, it's not the best. Longer loops, it's not the best. Whereas the SP has the weakest sequencer and the quirkiest workflow, and it's definitely the slowest of the bunch, but it also has the strongest sampling capabilities, samples in stereo, you can sample really long segments, it's easy to chop things up, so it's a really audio-oriented machine with a less powerful sequencer. So if you're into the whole resampling workflow, then the SP is really, really nice, but don't expect the sequencer to be as good as on these devices. So those are my final thoughts on these devices. Let me know in the comments what you think, which one is best for you and why.